Hi, and welcome to Prama Full Cup. I'm your host, Natalie Mullen, a certified wellness educator, speaker, facilitator, and teacher. Prama Full Cup is a mental wellness education podcast that helps women prioritize their wellness and put themselves first because you can't pour from an empty cup. I present unique wellness tips and strategies in ways that are relatable and practical and can be adopted for your lifestyle. Whether I'm speaking at an event, facilitating a workshop, or coaching clients, I'm passionate about helping women dream big, take action, and move the needle forward to achieve the life they want. Now, let's get started. Hey y'all, this is my 19th episode. Woohoo! Thank you for tuning in today to talk about peace and why it's critical that we choose it for ourselves. I hope you find the episode helpful, and if you do, afterwards, perhaps check out some of the past episodes based on your interests. If this episode resonates with you, please, it would mean so much to me if you would just click one button and give a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. It helps people find the podcast and it's encouragement for me to keep going. Recently, I spoke at the Canadian SME Small Business Expo, and I was a moderator for the panel on women's entrepreneurship. I loved it. It was just so empowering being able to speak to these five women about their experiences with entrepreneurship and just encouraging other women to get involved, to pursue their dreams, and to make their name known in the spaces that they're in. You can check out my Instagram, at Natalie Mullen, for my speaking engagements. And if you'd like me to speak to your organization or facilitate a wellness workshop, please inquire via my website, nataliemullen.com. Last week was my first guest interview, and I had so much fun recording it and having such a great conversation with Solange about home detoxing. I definitely plan to incorporate more of them, and I already have a few more lined up. So if you know someone that you think I should invite on the podcast for a conversation, please let me know. Or if you know a podcast that should have me on, well, let them know. Okay, so before we get into today's episode... It is the Take Action segment where we celebrate friends, clients, and listeners who are able to take action and move the needle forward. But this one's a bit special. If you recall a few weeks ago, I told you about Caroline. And we were celebrating Caroline because she had attended a yoga class. Well, y'all, Caroline has a confession to share with you. And she knows I'm sharing it with you. She didn't actually make it to the yoga class. She took a picture, sent me a picture of the booking. But when it came down to it, she didn't make it. And I told her I would share this story with you guys because I think that this is what happens to a lot of us. I think we intend to do something. We even put our best foot forward, but then we don't follow through. And the reason we don't follow through is usually because of either accountability, commitment, support, or a combination of the three. So next time, I suggested to Caroline, have an accountability partner, whether a coach or a friend, someone that you check in with to make sure that you're going to get to that class and just someone that you have to hold yourself accountable to. Because by nature, people, we don't like to disappoint others. That's why accountability partners are so important and so powerful. And also, it helps us to hold our word. And if we are people of integrity, we want to hold our word. So if you feel like you're struggling in an area, I would really suggest you find an accountability partner or just someone that can support you in the things that you want to do and help you keep track as you keep moving forward. Okay, so let's get into today's episode. Y'all, I have a confession. I'm a recovering stressaholic. I don't know if that's a word, but it is today. Now, I never liked the stress, but I used to bring it on myself. I had way too much going on. I was working all the time and I was always overwhelmed. I felt like I was being pulled in a million different directions and like I always had to say yes to everyone. I completely neglected my well-being, I complained a lot, I was miserable, and pretty low vibe. My marriage was on the rocks, I was caught up in a swirl of drama with a bunch of other people. Honestly, everything was chaotic and fast-paced and hustle and grind. 
and just a bunch of stress. I was having headaches. I couldn't eat properly. I couldn't sleep. I felt like I was in the middle of a hurricane and I couldn't put my feet down. And I was exhausted, like exhausted, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And it was a slow buildup of just a bunch of drama. And it got to this point of such high intensity. It's like a kettle coming to a boil and then you hear it shriek and scream. And I remember reaching my breaking point and just saying, I've had enough. This lifestyle wasn't serving me and it wasn't in alignment with what I wanted for myself and how I wanted to feel and how I wanted to live my life. And it's like a light bulb just clicked. I didn't want this anymore. I wanted peace. Can you relate? In today's fast-paced and demanding work environment, so many people are facing challenges of high workload or pressure. They're trying to balance all these multiple responsibilities and roles. They have deadlines and expectations. And a lot of that's leading to stress and overwhelm. You feel like you don't have enough time to get the task done that you need to get done. And it takes a toll on your mental and physical well-being. On top of that, there's a lot of uncertainty and changes happening in life. And that unknowingness about the future can also cause feelings of anxiety and ease. Maybe you're in a new circumstance where you have to make an important decision. And that is just causing stress. There are a lot of different reasons in life for why we can be stressed out. It might be our physical health. It might be trauma in our lives. It might be family issues, financial difficulties, personal relationships. But regardless of where the source of stress is coming from, choosing peace can greatly mitigate the impact of stress in our lives and support our overall well-being. Studies have shown that chronic stress and anxiety can have detrimental effects on both our physical and mental health. According to a study published in the Journal of Psychosomatic Medicine, individuals who actively choose peaceful responses to stress have lower blood pressure, reduced heart rate, and improved cardiovascular health. And a research study conducted at the University of California, Berkeley, found that practicing gratitude and cultivating a sense of inner peace can lead to a better sleep quality, increased feelings of happiness, and reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety. So by choosing peace, we reduce our stress levels, we improve our immune function, and we enhance our overall resilience. Peace is like the getaway to a happier and more vibrant life, and it allows us to navigate life's challenges with grace. When we think of how we want to feel, choosing peace allows us to create a foundation for healthy relationships, effective problem solving, and overall well-being. And it helps us to respond to difficulties rather than reacting impulsively, which leads to more positive outcomes in our personal and professional lives. I want to talk about the mindset, and I want us to tackle some of the subconscious beliefs that people have around peace. The first one is that peace is something external. That can only be achieved when you have all of your stuff in order, all your ducks in a row. A lot of people think, okay, once I have a better job or once I have more money or once I have a new partner, then I'll find peace. But this is simply not true because peace has to come from with, you have to be intentional about choosing it and you have to make specific decisions that are going to support welcoming peace into your life. It's a conscious choice and a mindset shift that we have to embrace regardless of what our external circumstances are. The second belief is that peace means avoiding conflict at all costs. And honestly, we need to think about this differently because conflict is sometimes going to be inevitable. Sometimes you are going to have to speak up for yourself, advocate for yourself, and respectfully and assertively communicate your needs and boundaries. And not everybody's going to agree with that. So you have to be comfortable choosing peace for yourself and walking away from people or situations that don't provide that for you. The third belief is that choosing peace can be selfish and controlling. Absolutely not. Okay, you are not controlling anyone except for yourself. You are dictating what type of energy is allowed into your life. How will you allow the people to treat you? What types of relationships will you have with people? How will you allow people, activities, and choices to make you feel? I really want you to think about that, the kind of life you want for yourself. What is your vision? How do you want to feel? What is in alignment for you? Do you enjoy stress? 
Would you be happy if life continued the way it currently feels for the next 10 years? And if not, what would you want instead? If while you're thinking the word peace comes up, well, keep listening. I have some tips for you. Many of these I've used myself throughout my own wellness journey to choosing peace. And let me tell you, I do not live a stressful life. Most days, I'm pretty chill. I'm in ease. I'm in flow. Of course, there are going to be moments of stress, but I'm intentional to always default to peace. So this dictates the decisions I make and what I allow in my life. What am I saying yes to and what am I saying no to? I'm going to give you four different scenarios with practical tips that you can use to find peace. And then I'll give you three tools afterwards. Scenario one, let's say you work in a high pressure corporate environment and you feel overwhelmed by the demands of your job. You feel constantly stressed and anxious and burnt out. So the solution here is to be intentional and choose peace. Begin your day with a few minutes of mindfulness to ground you. Work within your agreed upon work expectations and don't bend over backwards to your detriment. Verbalize what you have the capacity to do while maintaining your well-being. Take short breaks throughout the day to pause and rejuvenate and make sure to engage in regular self-care activities. My friend, you're going to have to get comfortable saying no and establish boundaries around your working hours and working activities and simply don't respond afterwards. Scenario two, you notice certain people around you are always complaining or they're negative, they're stressing you out, and they're just lowering your vibration, but you don't want to cut them off completely. So solution, again, choose peace. You might need to send them an email or a text saying, hey, I'm in a different phase of life right now and I'm just making some adjustments for my own well-being and therefore I'm going to be taking a step back. You'll be hearing a little bit less from me, but just know that I do care about you and I'll reach out when I'm ready. Scenario three, you're in a toxic relationship with a significant other, a friend, a family member, or a colleague. Every time you talk to them, negative feelings swirl. You might be experiencing physical, verbal, or emotional abuse, and you know that it's time to choose yourself, to choose peace, and walk away. Solution? You hire a therapist or a coach to help you end the toxic relationship. You close the door for good, and you move on, empowered, knowing that you have finally achieved a deep sense of inner peace and are walking into the future that you deserve. Scenario four. You've had it rough, you've experienced a lot of trauma in your life, and you feel a deep bitterness and resentment for the deck of cards that you were dealt. You decide, you know what, you no longer want to continue going through life this way because those feelings are weighing you down and they're keeping you from enjoying life. Solution, you choose peace and to move forward. You start by forgiving all of those who failed you. You decide that you will no longer be a victim, you will rise above despite the circumstances. So you begin a daily gratitude journal so you can start to change your mindset and see that there is good around you. The simple act of acknowledging the positives in your life helps shift your focus from woe is me to I have endless possibilities ahead of me. Now I just want to talk about three tools that you can use to help you in choosing peace. The first one is prayer. Whether you're a deeply religious or spiritual person or not, Many people choose prayer as a way to feel more peace in their life, especially when circumstances are out of their control. The idea of surrendering to a higher power and admitting that you don't have control over anything can instantly bring about an inner sense of peace. The second tool is a sound bath. The sound bath is a type of meditation experience where you listen to a variety of sound waves. You can just go on YouTube and search for sound bath tracks Or you can find an in-person event at a yoga studio or a wellness center or a community center, etc. They are very calming and peaceful and this can be an alternative to meditation that you might prefer if you find it hard to focus during a guided meditation or a solo meditation. The third tool is Reiki. So Reiki is really an energy healing therapy from Japanese origin. And it focuses on guiding healing energy throughout the body to alleviate stress and anxiety and improve overall well-being. 
So if you're into energy work or you want to look more into that, you can check out Reiki. For today's call to action, I want you to find a song that supports the action of choosing peace. Ideally, it should have the word peace in it. And I want the song to be one that makes you feel calm, secure, and relaxed. And I want this song to be a signal to you anytime that you're getting stressed or you feel anxiety to bring you back to yourself and to ground you. So this is going to be your go-to song for when you are feeling dysregulated or stressed out and you need peace. So spend some time on it because you are going to come back to the song over and over again to the point where as soon as you hear the first instrumentals or the first lyrics, your body will naturally over time come into a peaceful state because you have now trained yourself to welcome and expect peace based off that song. You are deserving of contentment, peace, and serenity in life. Chaos can transform to calm. Trauma can transform to triumph. Stress can transform to serenity. Anxiety can transform to assurance. Panic can transform to peace. It starts with choosing yourself. So please, my friend, choose you. I invite you to say today's affirmation with me. I I am the embodiment of peace. I radiate tranquility and serenity to those around me. In closing, peace is vital for our overall well-being as it reduces stress, improves our mental health, and enhances our resilience. Remember, peace is not an external destination. It's an internal choice that we make regardless of our circumstances. If this episode resonated with you, post a quote from it on Instagram and tag me at Natalie Mullen so I can see. Share a helpful point with a friend. And if you're on your own wellness journey, make sure to subscribe to my easy-to-read weekly wellness newsletter in the show notes. This podcast is brought to you by the Captivate podcasting platform. Start a free trial by clicking the link in the show notes. Until next time, continue to serve yourself, your loved ones, and your community from a full cup.